What is going on everyone? Today in the office, we are tackling a subscriber question. And today's question is from RB Studio. And he's asking very specifically about the color space transform node in DaVinci Resolve and how that factors into a real estate workflow. Now, the color space transform will, number one, give you the ultimately clean image. It's a great final output but it's a little more temperamental to deal with and harder to edit. So if you've seen my last two workflow videos, then you already know all the basics that factor into going to this video where I'm gonna be talking about color space transform. It's a little bit more difficult, not really. It's just a little bit more finicky than the other two methods. But once again, it will give you a far superior final image if you're willing to go that extra mile in your workflow. Let's go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here, if you have not seen my last videos, is start building our node tree. Now, the way I do this one in particular, I need six nodes, so I need to create five nodes. You can either come over here and create nodes this way, or you can press Alt S, we'll create a new serial node, because that's what we're trying to do, add node serial. This is what we're doing. So I need six of these total, so, there we go. Now I like to line them up in a nice and pretty way so everything looks nice and organized and you can keep everything good to go. So now that we have these six, we're gonna come right on over here and start labeling them so that way we know what they are. Like I said earlier, my very last node is gonna be my CST or color space transform. And that is because that's just how I've been shown from everyone else who does it. The very first thing I'm gonna have over here, it's gonna be my primaries. So primaries, my secondary one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off because this is actually an extra node I throw in there in case I need to make a final adjustment like a gradient or some sort of vignette or using one of the power windows. So I like to have it up there just in case I need it. This third one is going to be our log. And this is where we will be doing the transforming of any colors that we have to do. And then just as before, this one is going to be our denoise layer. And this one right here is going to be our sharpen. That is not right. There we go. Now, first thing I'll do is I'll turn the sharpening on. I know for my camera, for interiors, what I personally like for sharpening is, oop, it would help if I go under the correct tab. There we go. For the GH5, I like 47 for my sharpness. Then for my denoise, I'll go ahead over here. And for interiors, I'm gonna set it for my basic that I like. And then if I have to, I'll adjust it per frame. Too much, there we go. And over here, just as before, enhance, large. If you haven't seen me talk about all these, they are in my previous videos, so you can go back and watch these. I'm just gonna run through them now. Once again, turn this one off. So the only layers you should have on to start your grade are your primary, your log, and your CST. First thing we're gonna do is come on over here and drag on our color space transform. Put it at the very end and you will instantly notice when you set it up that things are gonna change real quick. The way you deal with your color space transform is right up here, input color space. This is gonna be, what did you shoot it on? Did you shoot it on a Sony, a Canon, a Nikon? I shot this in Panasonic V gamut, so that's what I use, and the input gamma is obviously the same, Panasonic V gamut you can already see the massive difference changing colors. Now the outport space, everyone I have ever seen edit anything online always outputs to Rec. 709. It seems to be the most popular, so that is just what I am going to use here. And you can see instantly what the color space transform does to your image. It makes it a more usable image, I guess, straight out the back. It's really like, it's adding a bunch of little things um, and making it look more like a finished image. And this is why people have issues grading with the CST. First thing you wanna do is actually just grab this still and save it on over here as before. Make sure to change the label, interior base grade. There we go. Now you know exactly what this is. And every time you have another clip, you can steal this and it has the basic formation of everything made, but not done. 
now it's time to actually start to get to editing with the CST and what makes it different is the fact that, as you can tell, it pumps a lot of saturation and color and contrast into the image. So it's really important you have this turned on before you start editing. The very first thing I want to do is come up to this log and I will come over here, not from my primary wheels, but to my log wheels over here, this third little dot. And now this is where I'm going to do all of my basic color correction. There's a couple ways you can do it. You could grab the eyedropper and just pull a space. And this typically works if you can find a white or gray area. For me, that worked just fine, but feel free to mess with all these. What's nice about messing in the log space is that it allows you to adjust all of your color tones separately. So you can come in over here and adjust just the midtones, or you can come in over here and just the shadows, whatever you want to adjust. It's a great way to, um, to color tone your image, especially if you're doing something like uh, film. But here in real estate, you don't really need that very much. I do use the shadow occasionally to pull reds out of my shadows because a lot of times when I'm stretching the dynamic range, my shadows and darks will start to turn red on me. So I will come in here and pull the red out of the shadows using my primary logs. But either way, I digress. We are done with the logs for now. Let's bump on over to primaries and come on over to our primaries wheel. And we'll start editing this, keeping an eye on our scopes the entire time. Cramp up our gamma, bring down our log till it's just touching. There we go. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is come on over here, add a little bit of contrast, come to HDR. I like to pull up the shadows. In my old way, I would pull down the shadows, but since I'm dealing with the CST or the color space transform, all the contrast that it adds, I actually pull a little bit of that away. So I pull up my shadows, I come down to my darks, and I do pump those down. And you can see just the tips of all these colors reaching that zero, which is perfect. Now that we've got that, I will come and pump up my lights just a tiny bit. There we go. And we have a more well-rounded and great looking final output. Now, once again, the reason I didn't really go over this the very first time is because it is a much more difficult way of grading. Not really much more difficult. It just involves you to know all of the wheels and all of these little sliders, all of this stuff that I taught you in my previous two episodes, really getting used to those will allow you to do this very well. So we've got it adjusted just like every other time. We'll come on over here and we'll steal this color grade. But as you can see in this room, it doesn't work as well. And this is another reason why using the color space transform is a much more difficult way to edit is because the old way of doing things, you could basically edit one room and steal that edit for the rest of the house and change just a tiny bit. For the color space transform, it really involves more editing per room on your end. So as you can see, like this one looks perfect, but as soon as I start facing a window, I'm gonna have to do some work. So we'll come on in here to the primaries, we'll bring down the gains, we'll come on over here to our highlights since it deals with whites mainly. There we go, bring up our gamma. Come on down over here since we increased the lights before and there we go, that looks much better. So we went from this to this and then we can go to the next one and steal it, there we go. Now we can start stealing some of these, but as you can see, like each one is not perfect. Each one needs a little bit of work. The old way of doing it, you can pretty much just rock and roll with one grade for everything. This one, you are going to have to spend a little time on each frame. But that being said, the final output will be much nicer, much cleaner, crisper, and more saturated without you having to do all that individually. The CST really helps with that, or the color space transform, should I say. Now, if we look at, let's take this and do our old way of editing. There we go. So there's the old way, everything's set up just like before. Let's go ahead and mess with our primaries here. And let's up, down. Like look how much contrast I have to add into the image. There we go. Much worse. You see what I mean? I still have to add a little bit of saturation to make everything right. So if you compare that to this, 
There you go. There's just much more range of everything in the CST method. It is a much nicer final output, but once again, it will just require more work. On average, if I'm doing a traditional MLS video, which is about a minute and a half, and I use the old way of editing, it takes me about 30 minutes, 45 minutes to edit. When I use the CST, it almost doubles that time just because there's a lot more fine adjustments that need to happen during the process. That's about it. That's everything I've got right now for the color space transform node. I hope this helps you enhance your video production to the next level and create those crystal clean real estate videos. Thanks to RB for bringing this question up. Big shout out to you over in Sydney. Thanks for staying engaged in the community. As always, keep shooting, keep enjoying what you're doing, and I'll catch you next time.